Welcome to View from the Back Row. This is the first episode with a guest, and it's Robert Sprout, a guy I've met through podcasting. He is uh, politically conservative, as I am politically liberal, um, but that shouldn't define us. And I, I think this is a great first episode, guest-wise, to have this conversation because it, it just goes to show that if you just are able to listen and not just instantly judge and instantly be holier than now and instantly just think you are right in every way, a good conversation can happen. Now, this show's not going to be this all the time. It's going to be any topic. So if you want to be a guest and speak with me on any topic, I am game. It doesn't have to be politics. It can be anything, life, entertainment, philosophy, anything. But I feel like this is a good jump off point guest wise because this is the world we live in and to start this out with a conversation about the world we live in which right now is revolving around politics sadly uh, I, I think this is needed and I hope you enjoy it Rob Sprout's on with me uh, me and Rob have been what you want call it virtual friends for a while yeah, at, at been, this, internet, at this point, internet buddies yeah at this point what is the difference you know like we we both uh are into some of the same stuff and mm -hmm. we'll just leave it that we know each other you know well enough uh through podcasting and stuff to actually do the whole facebook friend shindig and i don't do that with many people so if that tells you anything you know i like rob so. right right i'm uh I'm part of the original back row family too. The, yeah. The back row Steelers show for a while. I, I just deactivated the Twitter account and it kind of had hurt a little bit, uh, but it's uh my back row Twitter account got up to like 6,000 followers at one point. Yeah. It, and I, and it, it just kind of got a little bit too much, too much to manage. And I was like, you yeah. know what? I gotta be done. I just had yeah. to be done. Yeah. It, it's some um, stuff. Uh, I feel like the back row brand caught a little bit of fire more than more than I thought it would. And it's nothing astronomical. Like it did well. And I'm proud of what right. it did. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know how into fantasy football you are these days. I'm not uh, as much as I used to be. And I'm, I'm really not even into football or sports for that matter, as much as I used to be. But, right. So um, I still do a little bit of the fantasy football stuff. Uh, I'm in two different IDP leagues and then I have one redraft league. Nothing like the 14 or 16 I had at one point, you know, or it was just absolute insanity. And I did the trade at X thing for a while and was hanging out with those guys. Yeah. And doing stuff. Yeah. I mean, I just, that, that was kind of my journey into podcasting though. Mine too. So I, I, you know, no I, regrets. I, like, I don't even know what to do, man. And then you, you just come out of there like, well, I got these microphones. This setup can be relatively cheap. And I want to borrowing some equipment from somebody who is a streamer that had extra stuff laying around. Yeah. And that's how it all got started, man. And now it's like, I don't know. I, I love to do it. I hate, I hate what I don't get to record. Um, editing is a pain in the butt. So it I kind of, I kind of drag my feet on that a little bit with my other show, but yeah. Yeah. And that's still going, which is cool. Cause I, you know, I, I'm not going to lie and say I watch it all the time because I'm so right. damn busy. But like, well, I don't know that you I would see, agree with me. I see enough <laughs> on, on what? Just the, the topics There's or certain what? issues and stuff. Yeah, man, I go off. Well, I'm, I'm shouldn't matter, though. You know, I, I mean, it, 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 yeah. at the end of the day, does it really matter if we agree? Like, no, 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 no. You know, if me, if me and you can hop on a call, which we're going to talk this whole show of the rebranding of the whole back row thing, it's not going to be all politics. It's just, it's going to be hard not to talk about the shit because it's all we, it's shoved in our face. It's every day. It's all that oh, is yeah. going on in life and it's an election year. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. But, but we are going to talk some of that. And, and, and I don't care if I agree or disagree and cause you know, arms arms is conservative. You know, he's my right, best friend right, right. still to this day. It, it doesn't, that shit doesn't matter to me. Like, even if we get into an argument, even if it gets heated at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to either one of us. That's like, that's the last thing we base any of our friendship off of. I'm not going to not be friends with people because of their political leanings or, or religious leanings or anything. I'm a very complicated case, at least 
in my hometown when it comes to all this shit, because my thinking is way away from the thinking of most people that live around here. So right. like, you know, I wouldn't want them all to ostracize me, you know, just, just for that. Yeah. I mean, th- that can be, that's a little polarizing though. Right. Cause you're kind of like, uh, I-, I think there's a, I think there's a drive for people to want to be able to be socially okay around other people, whether they want to hide it or not, you know, and they just want people to share, they want people to share the same viewpoints. So I think trying to find a commonality in people that you're hanging out with is, it's kind of like a basis of an, the initial basis of a friendship. So I think that, you know, our commonality for instance, was the whole fantasy football thing. And, you know, so, some other conversations and stuff around that. And then equipment, microphones, yada, yada, yada. We kind of, we know each other, but we don't know each other. Right. And yeah. um, I think, you know, when you, when you, your, your core friend group too, like you're talking about arms and it, when it comes down to it, it's just like, Hey, is that person a good person to me? Like, are we a good, hu- are we going to be good humans to each other? And I, I think that you can have varying points of view, and I think it offers a very decent perspective on uh, how some other people may view certain topics. And, uh, you know, if you can have a, a, an adult conversation about it, at the end of the day, you can agree to disagree and go on about your friendship and be just fine. Yeah. And, and I'll add, I'm not looking to change anyone's mind because I, I think that's highly improbable. Like, I, I really don't think somebody leaning I don't think you get anywhere with that you don't I, I mean you really don't and our conversation has, is going to be nothing to do about changing minds that it, it, uh, are at least each other's and i don't think anyone listening would even you know what i mean but if you can sometimes give somebody a little tiny piece of something just to consider or think about or maybe just see things from another perspective like i'm sure you'll cringe but i watch the young turks and i don't when I watch stuff like that, I, I do not go all in on what people are saying. Like, I do not believe everything that Jake Uger would tell me. I do not believe everything that Tucker Carlson would tell me. I do not believe everything that Biden or Trump or anyone else. I, I make all those decisions on my own, but I watched them sit down with Rudy Giuliani. Mm -hmm. And I came away from that thinking, you know, despite the fact that I feel like Giuliani is, wrong in an absolute ton of ways he was extremely respectful in their conversation he was light-hearted they let him say what he wanted to say he let them say what they wanted to say they completely disagree but i mean i saw it and i was like if if only more people whether, whether you think one side or the other is batshit crazy if more people could sit down and actually do that for 45 minutes without blowing up at each other and walking out like as a as a liberal kind of guy, David Pakman drives me fucking crazy because he just shuts people down. He just stop, listen, stop. He's like to me, he's he's a lifer, and and I well, think and he's uh, just you, you can't earbeat people. You can't earbeat people, and and I, and I just you just need to be able to listen sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you know it's not going to go yeah, I, in a direction you want it to go and you'll get nothing out of it, you still have to listen. And that's fine, right? I, I think that, you know, that there's something to be taken away from all those conversations. And I'm honestly Sometimes. looking forward to having it with you. Uh, no, I mean, even if it's just like, okay, like this this person's perspective is so far out there that I, I, I can't I can't listen to it or be accepting of it. And that, that's your own personal convictions. And, yeah, and that's fine too. And just right? to be and clear, I'm talking about Pacman because I I can't watch the guy okay. talk to anybody because I'm like his convictions are so deep on the left that that he just refuses mm. to hear any even valid points. And like I'm very real with all with both sides of it because I really don't even like to take a side. The only reason I use the term liberal in regards to myself is because of the moral standpoint of it. Uh, right. it, it's not so much, you know, like when I go vote this November, I'm going to feel like shit about it because I don't want to vote for the oh, guy I'm do. voting for. Well, I, it, it, a lot of it just depends on, I, to, to me, 
I'm making that decision a lot on my perception of cognitive ability. Even that one person's better than the other person. It, you know, when it comes to the race. And and I can say, like, you know, there's arguments that Trump's a piece of shit human, and he is, right, in many people's eyes. And I will say here is, like, I, I typically am a conservative when it comes to that. I typically vote Republican. Um, but a lot of that has to do with, you know, my background. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a military guy. I'm funded by the government. When it comes to military type things, that puts food on my plate. And that sort of stuff is stuff that I have to think about when I'm voting for who I want to control my income and control, you know, what rights I have as a veteran, what, you know, what medical care is available to me, what I, everything. Right. And I don't, so I typically vote for a way that is going to be less cuts to what's available to me. Right. And historically that is a conservative, you know, standpoint. So, um, I say all that to say, like, I, I'm kind of like, I ride the middle. I have, I have liberal human rights leanings, all that sort of thing. Like I'm very much liberal in a human rights aspect of, of, of life. Uh, I am very much conservative when it comes to my money and taxes and things like that. And I don't understand there's there's weird flip floppiness happening in the parties right now, and it's kind of like, uh, well, I don't know who even cares about what taxes are important anymore. As long I don't as think they, I don't think they care the about anything somewhere. except for like finger pointing at this point. Well, yeah, it's it's like two warring mafia factions. Yeah, and they just can't really be violent to each other. Right, it, it has to be a, a verbal violence. Yes, and that that gets very frustrating because it's just bickering like yeah let's look at the debate they were it 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 was was really necessary to talk about a golf handicap during a presidential debate no and and that's the problem there's not much presidential about any of this anymore no nothing i'm not even that old but i yearn for the days of like this then this is sad from my perspective i yearn for the days of you know bush versus gore because neither one of them were a terrible guy yeah. to each other you know what i mean like and, and what sucks is like you see what's going on now like you got trump making the phone call to rfk jr and, and literally saying biden called me i appreciated it it was nice Man. and it's like okay so why the theater afterwards why because you know most of these people get along behind closed doors they have to and no, they do. Essentially, I mean, they, they talk about they're it. They're all on they're, It's all the same team. Pretty much. Yeah. Like let's, it's, let's be real here. Right. There's just this perception that gets driven out to the American people that things are going to be better one way or the other. And uh, I think we're, we're, we've, things have gone so far deep into a capitalistic society. And I don't know th- what the answer is, but I can honestly say that, you know, lowering taxes for the middle class, raising taxes for the higher class. Is that going to fix anything? It might help slow down the national debt, but there's no control over inflation because companies have a continual increase in product costs, regardless of inflation. And and that sort of thing is just going to continue to drive us to, to, to hate each other, to, you know, whatever the media is going to drive us to do. And like it, it pits people against each other. And then next thing you know, there's just, this this whole country of hate yeah over really what most people don't have a clue about i mean that that, at the end of the day it's like it's what most people don't have a clue about now now just to switch lanes a tiny bit because you know everything can't be super hunky dory on on this conversation because i've agreed with you every step of the way and i'm kind of like you in the way too that you know humanity humanity wise i lean left and then there are some things that like that i totally kind of agree with on on the right hand of things but you know when it comes to extremism i think people on the left have a hard time admitting that extreme leftism is even real but yeah that's that's a strange phenomenon man it's a strange phenomenon yeah you, you see like the it's it's a it's a very hard slap to conservatives if they bring up any sort of even valid point in, in a lot of cases. And unfortunately, that's what the media is showing 
to me, I, I don't really meet a lot of those people that yeah. are super extreme. There are some, and I know it. Yeah. Right. And I'm still acquaintances with a lot of them. Some of them have really drawn a big line in the sand. It's like, well, I didn't know that us treating each other good. Like I trusted you around my kids and you have a problem with me because I don't necessarily agree with your political leanings. Um, I thought we were better people than that. Well, I think, it, and I think the question we should all ask each other, like how, what percentage of Robert Sprout is politics? Like the, the human, right. the person, like what percentage of you is politics? You know, is it, is it 10%? Is it 50? Is it 75? Cause I meet people that it's a hundred percent that you can't get them to talk about anything else. And to me, that's yeah. extremism, no matter what side but, of it is, it is on. So I've met extremism on, on the, the Trump side. Oh yeah. I, I, I live in out town a couple weeks ago. I was up, I was up in <laughs> Leesburg, Virginia. Uh, I was with a buddy of mine and I talked about this on. Uh, getting older with Rob and Joe, my show, but the, yep. I think we skipped that in the beginning, but I don't really care. It doesn't matter. That's not why I'm here. You can go uh, back to um, it anytime I, you want. Okay, cool, man. Um, Maybe at the end. Uh, I appreciate that too. Uh, Let's see here. So we were up there and we were having a conversation. My friend and I were in a bar. We're talking to these two guys and my friend and I had been having quite a deep dive religious type conversation through the evening. Right. So it's just been a perpetual thing. We went to see this awesome, like 80s cover band called, uh, uh, what were they? That Arena Rock Show. They really, they were really put on a, quite a show. Um, a lot of fun. And we went bar hopping a little bit after. So we're having this whole, like, philosophical, religious conversation the entire evening. We sit down with some guys that were interested in our conversation. And within 45 seconds, the guy's talking about Trump. And I was like, so my buddy looks at him and says, we weren't even talking about politics. And somehow you managed to slap Trump in here into this conversation. And he said, and that's not anything that I want to talk about. And he literally turned and faced away from him at the table. I was like, whoa, you know, and that's, that's, you meet those people. Right. But then you get those people who are also, you know, so that's an, a, an example of extreme, right. And there are, you know, the extreme lefts where, you see the videos of them screaming at people for even just trying to have a conversation. Like, I don't understand that behavior either, which is no, to me, it's like a, that that's borderline like mental health crisis. And they're, yeah. they're just so washed out by probably social media and whatever, um, echo chamber they decided to follow down on X or Reddit or whatever their choice of social media type things are. And it's sad because it's ruining people's lives and they don't oh, even know that, that their life is ruined because of, you know, whatever rabbit hole they decided to chase down. Yeah. And and that's, that's just, that's the truth of it, you know? And it's what, it's what neither side even wants to hear, which is what is even more great about this conversation because correct me if I'm wrong, but like moderate left and moderate right, having a conversation about the extreme sides of, you know, yeah. e each aisle that they're moderately in like what yeah. I, I've said it before. I would vote for the right moderate Republican in a heartbeat over an extreme left. I'd you know, you know I, what I mean? I'd vote it's, for the right moderate liberal like we, Democrat. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's, and we just can't seem to, to find person. those people that would say that or admit that or like, well, the, the government is not going to allow that either. And I think there's a, you know, um, what while represented really is a, I guess, supposedly like as a Democrat, you got people like RFK Jr. I, I don't necessarily know that he's correct about a lot of things he says, but it seems like all his marbles are there and he's cognitively very sharp and he is extremely intelligent. And I'll take a lot of his, you know, Democrat, we'll call him liberal leanings very happily with what I know that he is capable of doing as a president and it, they will never allow him to be on a ticket to that's no. going to be able to be elected. Well, that's the problem. You know, it's you're either Democrat, 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 Democrat or Republican. That's your yeah. only chance. You know, we're, when's the last time an independent got, you know, elected was, I, I want to say it's happened, but it was, Oh, I don't know it has. maybe it hasn't. But I, I mean, you I'm, know, not, I'm not like a super big history buff or anything. I'm not either. I don't really dig into the, you know, the 
the, the stats of presidential elections here. But no, I don't care enough. I also don't think there would be very, uh, very polite trend data. No. And, <laughs> I, and I, yeah, it's, these parties are entrenched, man. I mean, it's almost surprising that, that Trump has taken one over because it was entrenched too. Now it's entrenched in a new way. Well, we could talk about why Trump was selected in the first place. I'm game to hear your thoughts. So reading some things and this, this is when the original nominations were coming down. I read and I, I, man, I wish I could quote exactly where I read it, that Trump was really recruited by military top brass because they felt like the federal government was being too out of control uh, with a lot of their agencies and a lot of control of the military. So they were recruiting him because he was not a politician, because he was a businessman. He was able to fix a lot of the things that were political that needed a financial touch or the, a different style of leadership, right? So I agree with that. Republicans even. that wanted him, it just kind of had to fit the bill of being a Republican yeah. because you have, you know, your, your military typically is a Republican backing. Um, and that's what it wound up being. And, you know, there was, I, I, I really can't go too much into it for recording purposes. Um, but I think a lot of countries suffer the same things where you have an instance like this, where it's like the right person, uh, maybe preventing a military coup or something like that. Now we are much, a much more established country than a lot of those countries that, 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 that happens to, but just sometimes there are right. people that are also in power in this country that are not necessarily labeled as the president. Oh yeah. Oh, of course. I, I mean, corporate donor money is, is, is a massive, 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 uh -huh. massive, massive issue. And if massive you bring somebody issue. in office that has a lot of, uh, say in that world. Right. I think they've, can, they've got a lot of power already. Yep. You got some movers and shakers and people yeah. that can make things happen for you. And I totally 100% agree with the rhetoric that got Trump elected because I, I think the establishment is, it, it does run too deep. Mm -hmm. it, it is the stranglehold is too strong. And, but, but I, I don't think that was the guy, you know, I, I don't think that was the guy. He was not the John F. Kennedy, you know, which I firmly believe was killed because he had some big ideas that went against everything that the rooted oh, establishment, yeah. you know, you know, so yeah, to, to go yeah. after a guy, like I, I get the thinking, I think it was completely, you know, fucked up. Like it, it didn't work out in my opinion, but I still think the thinking is right. I still think, you know, I would love to see each of these parties completely get pushed around a little bit by somebody the people actually want i just don't know how or when we get there right now, now and, granted and the people you, the half right, the people do want trump but or, or, you have that because the media agencies say so right so so what do you do like you can't you have two major news networks realistically you got your cnn you got your fox news and they're arguably against each other when it comes to political news reporting yeah. and that's really the only thing they report on at all but it, and you can't even call it reporting it's they're just propaganda machines yeah it's, it's stoking fires both sides it's right and it gets people fired up against the other side and then it gets the other side fired up against you know the other side and then everybody hates each other um oh my god it you, produces it, clicks it, it does it does it does do that and you know, we, we, as a country and as, you know, whatever, we are very much used to instant gratification. Like I and, said, on that video, you even emailed me about like, we want what we want and we want it right. Fucking now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the problem is people only know what they want because the television told them so. Yep. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't understand. Like you can't, you can't have a free country if you can't have free thinking. And that's that's a whole nother rabbit hole to go down yeah but it it's it's interesting man 
and then like you st- we can stack the war stuff on top of it and what all that comes down to there's a lot of frustrations there and at, at what point are we going to see another oh i don't know like tea party like in boston or something you know like just re- realistically the country has taxation without representation every other country in the world is getting representation to my tax dollars right yeah <laughs> and the, the question just seems to be when you know because we're seeing crazy we're seeing shit we couldn't have the shit we see now i couldn't have imagined like me at 10 years ago and 10 years ago isn't that long ago i mean we're almost no. we're not that you know that was close to to trump even running that was close to you know biden even, it, it, it's not that long ago but 10 years ago i couldn't have imagined some of the stuff i've witnessed right it's kind of mind blowing and uh, it, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around and I, there's no other way I can even spin it as, you know, which is super cliche, but internet is just fucking everything up. Oh, huh. a- access to information is, is, and it's a brain overload, whether false uh, or, or accurate information. Right. And it, it, your brain can't discern the difference. Not if anymore. Not really. Uh, a lot of it i think would come back to good parenting and at this point if you're stifling your children from technology or media you're really just you're hindering their future because they don't they're not gonna have a choice and so so that's that's a very difficult line to walk as a parent like what technology do i allow my kids access to and what do i not right um but what it boils down to, I think, is that you have it, the issue of, I think there, it is a mass majority of the population that is actually uneducated on the happenings of our own country. The majority is uneducated on that. And, Sadly. And that's not to say that I'm completely educated. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I am. I'm you know, not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm militarily educated and I still I still work for the federal government and I still do, you know, things like I, I go to a military base every day to go to work. I'm retired from the Navy. I still continue my job and continue to support efforts, you know, to make sure everybody here is safe. And it's a different aspect, not being in the military, but um, very much as important. So I think you, you get, a different perspective from the military side of things, but like diplomatically and when it comes to how we even handle our, our, our trade with other countries and stuff like that and taxes. And I'm clueless for a lot of that. Same. And it, it, like, they're going to argue about immigration here. Like, okay. So I saw a couple of videos of Texas of people c- crossing the border. I don't know how many people are crossing the border. I don't have a live stream. I only know what the news is telling me. I don't even know if that's accurate. Yeah. But I can't sit here and say that I'm free thinking enough to say the news is lying because I just don't know. And that's what sucks. And, and I think <laughs> it that does suck. it does very much so. And, and I think that just a massive part of, of the problem is, is that people cannot and will not admit that they truly don't know. But everybody thinks that they know. Oh yeah, everybody everyone they know. They think they know, mm-hmm. and 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 they speak on it whether they know or not. And no, that that is, that is the frustration. You know, I, it, I'm already so sick of seeing the conspiracy theories. Oh yeah, you know about the sh- the the uh, attempted assassination. Like I'm so 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 sick of seeing. The you think there was a video from the guy that they said shot him like an hour later be like hey i'm actually this person and you got the wrong guy yeah and and that guy and was then that disappeared lying. Well, that yeah. disappeared yeah but but where i mean it, it, where'd it, that video go it also wasn't that guy was him? you know who knows uh, uh, well i mean i guess i guess it's possible but there was another guy completely different guy that resembled the guy supposedly because I, again, again, I ears and everything yeah, else. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did the whole comparison thing. Yes, yeah. and I, I was like, 
that's going you know? too. And you're like, what the fuck am I what, like? And I, and I get it. Like at the end of the day, people on the internet are not going to get the answers before, you know, people that would, there, there are still some people out there that will speak the truth. It's just a matter of if anyone will listen or not. Right. 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 And, and, and I'm, you, you have to be able to like discern where to put your credibility. Like, are you going to put your credibility on some of the few voices that you think you can trust or some random dude on the internet that, that has a picture and says, actually, this is the guy, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I I have a hard time putting my faith in a post on X. (laughs) I just, that that, that is, you're not lying there. Um, just doesn't make sense man I, I i just again like i don't know what to believe anymore right so then you go and you, you go to talk to your friends like did you see this did you see that no it was this guy or no it was this guy yeah but then you have like you know it, you have stuff that so many people can see through the bullshit though that's coming out in the reports for like the secret service for the the director saying oh we didn't have people up there because of the slope of the roof of the building or something like that meanwhile the people that were the 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 snipers up there to protect so yeah they were just talking about the slope of the building as being an excuse for it and that it wasn't safe for their people to be on meanwhile like uh, they were on a slope building looking at the guy yeah and there was also i read reports saying that they they saw the guy for like they had him ready to sh- to take out for like 30 seconds or more and they were he guys like i was just waiting on the order to pull the trigger and then it, it was too late. Yeah. And I mean, I have a little bit of experience with the security stuff and I can say that there's some stuff that just don't make sense, but at the same time, you're not there. Like you're not there to, you, that's like it's people get mad at football players. I'll use that analogy, right? Ah, oh, well, they didn't make this play, but well, well, were you on the field trying to make that catch? Were you on the field trying to break that tackle? Yeah. Stay? or get out of bounds. No, you weren't there. You no. were there. You're not the person in the fight. Right? Yeah, and, you, and you don't you you don't know how easy that pass was to catch or not catch. Yeah, and it, and the same goes for like these Secret Service guys. You're like, oh look, this guy ducked out of the way. Maybe that's the first time that guy was ever shot at. I'd say there's a good chance that's the first time any of those guys were ever shot at. Right. You so know, you, and the, and the woman the, the and woman that everybody's given hell like you know they're trying to diversify which. You know, whether you think that's a, a good thing or a bad thing, I, I don't know, but uh, you, I, if she can't, a, if so, she so can't they're, handle they're, it, it's not a good they're, thing, they're, but that, then you've got the, the issue of the guy on the roof, like, man, you're getting ready to shoot a, a 20 year old kid. You better, you better be right. Well, and, and no, even I know if, you're, even if, you're in even the secret service, not, right? you gotta do what you gotta do, but you gotta you do know, what you gotta do. And, and still to gotta honest, think too, like, oh my God, I've never been not. in this situation and here we go. Right. And to me, and I can sit here and I, you know, I might say if I was the, if I was the sniper up there to protect the president, I had to pull the trigger and ask for forgiveness, you know, like, and that, there's that narrative too, that I'm seeing on social media. It's like, oh, I would have pulled the trigger. I would have just done it with or without the order. I see somebody up there that's going to, to sure, gotta sure go you would, buddy. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sure you, sure. Would. you don't know that. Yeah. And, and it it was just like you, you don't know what you would do. No. Nobody knows what they would do in that situation. Nope. And, and, you know, I, I mean, I've served people and it's been it's been in, I've been in some hairy situations, you know, and you just don't know how people are going to act. You just hope that you're going to respond with the right training that you received. Yeah. And hope that that pans out for you. Really hope uh, and, and I think that people forget that these are they're they are human beings, right? Fight or flight is a real thing. And any given day, your fight or flight varies. And you have yeah. this whole oh yeah, it can you be know, based, you may, based you may on your mood when you wake up in the morning today than yesterday. You know, like right. I'm feeling a little more tough today. Yep. You know, yes, yesterday my knees hurt, and there's no way I was going to be running up a rooftop. You know, <laughs> you just don't know. Yeah, we're humans, man. Uh, man uh, people forget that just and that that, that gets frustrating too because that sends so many people down an angry hole and that, that's kind of like a both sides thing man people are just angry at the whole situation and Every, then everybody's angry right <laughs> and, 
it is messed up is they're not even angry about the same thing about the situation. I'd be angry. A former president was just shot at. I don't care what side of the political leaning I'm on. Like, this is being like, okay, yeah, I'm okay with, you know, all the, all the, there's a lot of people that got lost their jobs and got fired and put on, put on big chopping blocks with their businesses and companies and stuff for posting stuff. You talked yeah. on the, the previous episode about the whole Jack Black and Kyle gas thing with them talking, you know, at their show and Kyle gas saying like, oh, I wish he wouldn't have missed. Like, what is that, dude? I can't, I can't understand it. I, I, I get I get despising a human so bad that you think the world would be better off without him. I get that. Sure. Hitler got, you know, do we want Hitler to be around? You know what I mean? No, we don't. Do we want, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer to still to be out walking in public? Like, no, like, and, and, but, but we're, we are also talking, I don't know. We're not talking about Hitler though. We're, we're not, we're, we're not talking, talking about, about Jeffrey Dahmer. We're talking about a president correct. of the United States. We're not talking about anyone who's actually carried out specific orders. Now I will say he's very good at slyly asking for violence, but you, you, it's, it's still a different, it's still a different story and we don't have a genocide on our hands. We don't have, we don't have, you know, the tournament camps, we don't have the situations are not the same. So right. to not ask, to, so to be, yeah. So to be disappointed that someone wasn't killed in cold blood blows my mind. No matter how much you don't like the person like yeah. Yeah, Jared, yeah. Jared from subway is still alive. If someone said you can go kill this motherfucker right now, I'm going to be like, I'm not taking his life. That's that's right. That's not my decision. It's not my decision. It has nothing to do with me. And I don't, I don't wish for anyone to have to make that decision. I don't wish for anyone to have to like be responsible. Like if somebody, even in self-defense, I'm going to have an internal conflict about killing someone that's going to kill me because I can't imagine taking a life. I uh, get, I, I guess at the, at the moment I'm, but I, I don't have any, you know, you and I differ on that too. Like you've been in the military. I've not ever been in a situation even remotely close to where I had to even think about it. I don't know what I would do, but from the outside looking in, I'd be like, that would be conflicting for me because I, I will shut down for 10 minutes. If I hit a groundhog on the road, you know what I mean? Like I, yeah, right, right, right. I value life so damn much and it is not my place to enjoy taking, I don't hunt. I could not shoot a deer because I am that soft. I don't I, think I just, that I could necessarily say like, so I, I've, you know, I've gone deer hunting. I've shot I've, uh, uh, just for your example, real quick. Right. I don't necessarily find joy in that. Right. Right. I do find joy in how the venison tastes afterward. Yeah. And it, I, and I have, you I have know, no issue like, with that. I also and, understand and, and, that they're, we're overpopulated with deer and that, you know, the circle of life sometimes requires things to happen. I'm just not the guy that's going to make it happen. Fair enough. And it, the, it doesn't, the, you know, the, it doesn't bother world, me that other world people need, kill the world needs more people like you. Well, the world needs uh, more people like all of us, but that can fucking agree on something or listen to each other or just not hate everything that goes against every core fiber because everyone is so everyone's holier than now yeah everyone is so okay. damn convinced that if you are different from me in any way at all you are the most wrong person i have ever met in my life yeah. and that's just that fucked blows, up it blows my mind how it's boring cool. would it be if we were all the exact same it'd be so boring <sighs> if everyone i knew was exactly like me i wouldn't want to hang out with them like I need yeah, some like, kind okay, of difference well, I'm, I'm, here. I'm just hanging out with myself, you know. I do that enough. I'm 43 years old. I do that plenty. I hear you, man. I hear you. I'm, I'm 41, so I'm right behind you. Uh, and I, I appreciate my time with me more. I, absolutely, hundred yeah, percent. I used to just uh, whatever. That's a whole nother conversation. Just totally neglect myself because it was just boring. Oh, I've yeah. always, I've always, I always used to neglect myself. I still, 
have never lived on my own without a roommate or a female. I can't, I can't remember the longest Neither, I ever dude. went. I never thought about that. I don't remember the longest I've ever went without being in a relationship. Like, I don't think I've ever been more than a week or two of just like me doing me. There has wow. always been wow. someone or something or a friend group. Like I have never really just done me for more than a week or two. If I, if even a fucking week or two, I don't even know that I've gotten a week or two. So I don't know if I have either. I, I mean, I rolled right into the Navy like two weeks after high school. And I mean, I've, I spent over half my life in the military. That's a weird way to look at it. Yeah. But, but um, along with that comes, you know, you're just perpetual roommates with people. And then I got married and, you know, like now we got kids and running around the house and everything else. It's just not yeah. my father. My father's day gift this year was my wife took the kids to Ohio with her uh, to visit her sister. So I could have the house to myself for like two or how three weird, days. How weird was it? It was so strange. <laughs> it's weird. I was, like, I was like, it's so quiet. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have to let anybody know I'm leaving. I don't have to cook for anyone. I don't have to put anyone to bed. I'm not wiping butts. I'm not, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, just, it's weird, man. It's a weird thing. It is a weird thing. Putting the kids to bed. Like it was just, kind yeah. of, I guess I'm just going to go to sleep now. Um, my wife will leave me for half a day sometimes and take the kids to Kentucky to see her, uh, her aunt and two or three hours. I'm like, this is great. By hour four or five. I'm like, I miss all of them. Oh yeah. And this yeah, is just yeah. too I, weird. I, I can't handle it terribly, but, but you know, at the same time, it was just, it's a nice little mental break. And uh, yeah. So sometimes I need that. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to sit down and play 10 straight hours of fallout four. I wish I had that, but I, I, I have no interest in video games anymore. So it's like when I do have that alone time, like, well, I'm going to go out to the building and record two or three mic reviews. And at the end of the day, that's still work. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, but, but at least like it's something you, you love and you're passionate about. That. I do. Yeah. So I appreciate your mic channel. That's where this one's from. This is the Dude, H- I, AC 50. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't looked at that one for a long time, but I have, it took me, you know, 37 or eight years to find something I even liked. I don't even know what I liked back. What well, was fantasy football? And that's kind of a yeah. lame thing to yeah. like, like if that's the only hobby you got, that's kind of lame. <laughs> and I'm so happy. I think once I found all this audio stuff, I'm like, all oh, fantasy football is boring as shit. Now that's literally a game. Yeah, and it's like I could be here talking about anything with anybody yeah. at any time, man. Yeah, and, and I, I do love that, and that's one of the reasons I like I kept doing the podcasting stuff after leaving, you know, stopping the back row Steelers show thing, and then starting a podcast with Joe. It was kind of like we I mean, were you're, you're talking like while. three to four years strong on that, right? Yeah, man. Um, I mean, we were we were weekly for a long time, and now we're lucky if we get like once a month. That's how so things get. Yeah. yeah. But it's still going. And it's a ton of fun. And it doesn't matter what your schedule is, uh, you know, as long as when you do it, it's fun. Yeah, man. And we we try to fit it in on like a Friday or Saturday night randomly. Um, And a lot of times it's kind of like a short notice thing. And then, you know, we get a couple people to come check us out on Facebook or something. But obviously that's how my stuff goes, because this this was like this was as short notice as it get as it gets. I'm like, well, you don't what are you doing tonight, Rob? Yeah, I, 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 know, like, I know what I'm oh, doing. So if, you, if you got right, 20 minutes, right, right. yeah. And I don't, I normally don't have this room. Like I have the setup for it, but I haven't had a chance to really set it up and get it going. Um, that's a great thing about audio. You grab the P4 and you grab your mic and you go in a room and you're good. Right. So like I got, I mean, I got my laptop and stuff set up. So I'm sorry if I keep looking away. I'm looking over at the laptop. It's just kind of off screen. No, doesn't doesn't um, matter at all. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, the, the P4, it's a super quick setup. Like, you know, I think we were texting probably whatever, 45 minutes before we actually jumped on here. I was, I was making tacos, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, but yeah, so jumping into this hobby, it's, I, I have another show that I, it's in my head. It's been wheeling around. I know you've been tossing around the whole back row thing. And I was like, man, I'd love to do this with bark. Like, uh, 
it, it, you said you're not looking for like a regular person or whatever. And that's great. Like I'll jump on with you whenever you feel like recording. Well, what well, I say, I say that, but. I say that to kind of limit expectations. Cause, cause if you don't say that there are, I have gotten myself into a position where, and it's very strange, but where I have a, 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 t- a small cult following mm-hmm. on, from the YouTube stuff. And I mean, I already had dozens of like a couple dozen of people instantly be like, Hey, I'll do a show or do 10 or do 12 or, you know, whatever. And it's like, I know, I know my time restrictions and my time restrictions are, I don't want to be that guy because I don't even know when I'm going to be out here. Like some, I come home, you, you and Joe, sometimes you come home and you're like, I, there's no way I could do it tonight. And, and that could last three weeks. It could last a month and a half. You don't when you have kids and you got a job and you're fucking old, like we are sorry if I, I don't know what your language is like anymore. Mine's I have potty mouth, uh, uh, but, but like, I don't know when I'm going to do one thing to the next. Like I have Mike companies drive me nuts every day. Like when's this video coming out? And I'm like, I told you in the beginning, it's coming out whenever I put it out. And right. that's just what it is. Cause I don't know what I don't have a schedule. My schedule is family first and squeeze everything else in and there's work there's work there Uh, you know like so you know there's a ton of people that that are really good listeners but they're not necessarily understanding the whole process behind getting what you're listening to also so that that can be a thing like uh you know i'm much like you in the aspect of is that i don't want to hear all your mouth noises and i don't want to hear your lip smacks and sniffles and other things like that so a lot of times i take time to edit a lot of that stuff out you know, I, I edit a, a two hour show and it takes me four and a half, five hours to get through an entire show to edit it. I don't have that kind of time to just sit down and edit, you know, and no, I. Do it bits and pieces at a time. And it, it's just that everything, everything is so time consuming. And, and we, we just talked a little bit ago about, you know, I don't really take a ton of time for me. I, I get, you know, I get, I give my time to as my family as as much as i can and it's it's pretty rare that i i get to actually take time to do something that i want to do and i'm not complaining about that at all i don't want anyone to take it that way but right um i i've taken on this whole like i am a i'm a i'm a better person i'm a better father i'm a better husband with a almost a a, a servant attitude toward my family and i i take great pride in that and i love I love doing things with my family and for them. So if it takes time away from me having my personal time, that's okay. Because I, I'm the I, same I way value out of it. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, like, and, and that's why, and I, I don't say this for sympathy. I don't say this like, woe is me. I don't have friends, but I don't have friends. Cause I don't have time. Yeah, dude. You I'm know. with you. I got a, I got a couple select few. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, I, and I say that not meaning like arms mm-hmm. isn't my friend, but me and arms will talk like once a week and I'll see him once every three months, you know, cause we're busy. Right. And as and long that, as we can, when I are. yeah, like, as long as you can pick up where you left off, like that person should stay your friend, regardless of how often you, you know, do or don't see him. Oh yeah. It's and the people that can't handle that, that you just got to weed out. Unfortunately. Yeah, man. My, my friend's list has dwindled. Um, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, people are sorry, selfish. man. Like you're, you're not a priority to me. And That's it, and nobody likes to hear that. No, nobody does. And and I'm okay. I, I'm not going to say it like it necessarily as direct as that. Yeah, you know? but yeah. I have people that you know I appreciate um, the value that they bring to my life, to my family's life. You know, just uh, conversations, just like enjoy, enjoying being around them and hanging out, right? And that 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 list of people has gotten exponentially smaller the older i get mine too it's like i'm not i'm not out partying and doing stuff i was doing when i was younger i'm not going to bars and stuff so like i don't have commonality with a lot of people that i used to be friends like i'm still friends with but i don't really associate with a whole lot anymore right well because you you know your time is more valuable than a bar (laughs) yeah (laughs) it doesn't mean you'll never go to one but like Right. That's why right, when right. I, that's why when I talked to you tonight, it was like zero pressure. 
Like just because I'm going to be in my building doing some recording stuff, that does not mean in any way, shape or form that I expect you to be able to join me. If you can cool. If not, eventually I figure we'll, we'll, I, I mean, we've talked about doing something like this for years. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So, well, we you know, and, whole, we had a whole thing like lined up, ready to go for it. Yeah. Uh, and, and then and you it, told me uh, something along the lines of like, time is just not permitting. And like, I understood 100% cause I'm like, yeah. I fuck, I get that shit. Yep. Cause you know, I, you know, I worry when I jump into anything, like, do I have time for this? Am I going to, you know, oh, man, upset somebody yeah. because I don't have as much time as what they have. And it's like, you know, it, it's hard to find those people that are perfectly give and take with you. Like, and that are understanding when the cards don't fall right. Yeah. It's hard to find that. And I mean, you, you could almost extrapolate that right back to the political conversation from earlier and the, mm -hmm. the and the problems of the world almost boiling down to, you know, if, if you're, if you're not benefiting me when I need benefits, like, I don't want nothing to do with you. And that's, that's kind of how that shit goes to like, yeah, I, 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 lean, feel, I, I lean, I lean right. And, it's, it's, and if it's you don't like a, get out of here, you know, right, well, it's not like a selfish thing necessarily either. It's like, it, it has to be a give and take. And if I'm going to be the only one given then for sure, like, and we're not, I, I don't have time for that. No, I uh, mean, we got families to give to, we got jobs to yeah. give to, we got things we want to do to give to. So when somebody that just expects it's it's expectations yeah man uh th those those people tend to find each other yeah yeah <laughs> you know uh, and then they just commiserate together um but but either way i i'm 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 super appreciative of of, of you and like whatever this relationship is friendship sure um o over the time like it's it's just been nice to to kick it and hang out with you. Yeah, and have these conversations and stuff. And we don't normally talk about these sorts of things. Like every now and then, I think it might be we we talk about having the conversations, but we never actually have the conversations. So who's got the this time. is super cool, man. I, I was <laughs> yeah. like, I totally wasn't expecting you to be like, yo, dude, can you get on tonight? I was like, uh, yeah, fuck it, ah. let's get. It. Ah. So you met you messaged. I saw you message. I was like, hey, it's Rob. Yeah, yeah. and and that's you know that's that's just that's what i prefer doesn't sure. matter it doesn't matter if i haven't talked to you in a long ass time like oh hey yeah you know it, it's it's it should be simple and yeah and you know your your show popped up into my my podcast app here so i was blows I was my like, mind oh. that anybody has hung on this long because it is so sporadic well, right. Well, the, the, you know, the picture changes, the name changes and stuff, whatever, but the, RS, the RSS link is <laughs> yeah. still the same. Yeah. Uh, so whenever you change it or do whatever with it, I, I get a notification that you put a new episode out and I always listen to it. I like when it, when it showed up, um, I think it showed up for me, maybe this morning I finished the podcast I was listening to, and then I listened to yours. That's just something I normally do. I don't know. And I don't, I don't necessarily always agree with you or disagree with you, but yeah. it, it's interesting. And I, I, you know, I can appreciate your perspective on things. How silly would I be to, to think, to want everybody to agree with me, you know? Well, I mean, I mean, so, sometimes that, I have, that, sometimes I have, you to do. That's yeah. you. <laughs> and sometimes I have thoughts and like, and there's been a handful of times where I've like spilled some thoughts out and three days later, you know, like, you know what? My, my outlook's changed a little bit. But I have no shame about capturing things in the moment, you know, as long oh, right, as, as right. long as the rhetoric's not damaging. Um, yeah. And that's the important piece. That's, that's a real important piece. And I think being able to accept that what you're being told may not necessarily be the truth either. Yeah. And to have good critical thinking skills, which is something the world lacks as well. That's really difficult. Really, really difficult. Yeah. yeah. Cause I mean, you know, I'm, I'm even, I'm even acknowledging of like maybe me even leaning politically left is just wrong. Maybe it is, but, but I have to, I have to decide in the moment. I have to make my decision as I live. I can't, you know what I mean? And, and I'm not saying it is, I'm saying like, 
I would fully be able to be accountable for anything I was wrong for, you know, down to like the mayor in my town. If I voted for a mayor and they, they ended up just being an absolute piece of garbage, like, wow, I was really wrong on that one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> or you could just continue to stick to your convictions and vote in people that are going to continue to ruin your life. So, yeah, yeah I, I could continue to just uh, fall within party lines like they want you to. Yeah. Uh, th- then what? I don't, I don't, well, I don't just know. Just blindly, blindly vote blue, you know, blindly vote, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know. Uh, and you know what? And that's the town, thing, uh, you know, but vote blue, orange man, bad, you know, like, pretty much. Like, and like th- that won an election. Yeah. <laughs> that won an election. I, I can't say that it was any sort of intelligent speaking on either side that won or lost it. Yeah. I, I, at this point, I'm like, I'm not sure what wins or loses them <laughs> because even polling is just, which I don't trust polling at all. Have you ever been uh, asked? No. Any of those questions? Oh, wait, one time. Really? One time. Okay. Recently. <laughs> and it's been in the last, it's been the last two months. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. I got a, I, I did get a phone call. I don't remember. It was not as specific as the president. It was, uh, it was basically more party lines. Like, do you, okay. you, it was kind of like, do you feel, um, you know, conservatives have your best interest in mind? It, it was, it was something really vague and I was absolutely shocked that it happened because I've never known anyone or at least no one's told me that they've been polled. So I'd be curious, like if when you got that, did they tell you what the context of the questions was going to be used for? No. So, uh, so I mean, you don't even know what sort of like damaging poll you're even participating in at that point. Correct. Yeah. So that's dangerous. Um, And again, more, more narrative driving. It Uh, was only, it was like two questions. It was like, I've gotten a couple texts, right? Oh yeah. I've gotten texts. And it's just like, I'm like, I ain't doing that, dude. I don't yeah. know. What, I don't even know what you, I don't even know who you are. Well, and because I live in a red state, red County, red city, 76% red County. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I it's mean, always, I'm, it's, I'm up there too. There's a military base here. Let's be real. Like, yeah, but it's always assumed. It's always assumed. like the questions I get are, you know, will you support, you know, JD Vance or whatever, you know, it's, it's yeah, like, yeah. wait, wait, what? Wait a minute. But, but but Ohio doesn't have, or at least my area, maybe it is Ohio too, but there, you know, there is no, I'm not registered one way or the other. I'm simply registered. Okay. So I'm not there, you know, you Google me and it's not going to say registered Republican or registered Democrat because you don't register in Ohio that way. Well, that's kind of nice actually. It is. Cause I, I, I don't need any political violence at my doorstep. I've had that happen. I had a truck full of dudes jump out and tear all the signs up in my yard and scream in my house. And it was 20, you know, 2020, I heard wow. two o'clock in the morning, fuck Joe Biden. Cause my wife is more, my wife's harder leaning left than I am. And okay. she stuck a sign in the yard. She's like, do you care? I was like, well, no, I don't, I don't care. I was like, it'll probably get destroyed. And it did. And woke Man. our kids up and made my kids cry. And you know, it was good times. Right, and a a truck pull into my driveway with a good taste in your mouth about you know. Oh, well, that that's that's the least of it. Like I had a truck pull in with dual Confederate flags hanging on the the back and got screamed about being a Democrat, and they rutted my yard up and left. You know, is uh, yeah, it's it's not good where I live. Wow. Yeah. Wow, man. Not good where I live. I so moved all the way out in the country. You know what's crazy is like. Uh, I th- it's crazy that you even have to worry about something like that. I know. And it's that it is. is so disrespectful. It is. Like, but it, but the it, same it, shit. It, to it be just, fair, the same shit happens in liberal cities. Like if if somebody put a Trump yeah, uh, sign oh, out yeah, in their yeah, yard, yeah. like it's getting destroyed, dude. Like probably set on fire. Yeah, and 
I mean, it's 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 no wonder that the you know the division just keeps getting more and more. Well, yeah, there's. I mean, it's stoking. I was so glad that the assassination assassination attempt was a fail. What, could yeah. you imagine? Could you imagine what would ha- what what shit would have went down already if it was not a failed attempt? Dude, I don't even know what would be going on. I don't either. And I like as soon as I saw that, I was instantly just scared. Be, shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it'd be oh. So a, a lot of the, let's say a lot of the media that you see is a lot of a lot of riots and stuff are, you know, um, that at least that that I see are liberal people conducting said riots, right? Right. And then you get like the Patriot Front guys and yada yada yada, the conservative guys that are doing their marching and stuff or whatever. But like, it's it's next level now. It's not just like having a, a there's no peaceful protest that's that's a lie no no peaceful. no protest. everybody there's wants no, to get a fight no on pe- camera yeah well yeah you want you want your you want your five seconds of fame buddy thanks for ruining my yard and scaring my kids that's it you know, that that that's fucking sad is what it is and it's it's unfortunate because that label that is what a, a republican is in the eyes of millions of people yes which is the same reason I was like, God, the the shooter, like, I was like, God, please don't be a Democrat. Like, please. Should you even have to say that? Like, uh, no. No. Right. And, and to, to, you know, to all the Republicans are like, God, please let it be a Democrat. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there was no like, God, I hope they take that guy out. Like, that was my thought because I was watching it. And I was like, what's going on? Get him. Like, that's the only thing I could think of was like, something's happening. Get, get whoever's doing it. And I didn't think about like who, what, when, or why, you know, to me, it was just like, oh, it's probably somebody that just hates Trump. And I think that, that there's such an interesting narrative being painted around this, this, this young guy that they, well, especially because we don't really know. No. And and like not to be conspiratorial, but like, do we not know so the narratives can keep being painted for clicks? Like, well, dude, think about. I mean, like, I guess we know entire, a little, but nothing sure, it, right? And I think you even said like, if there was one person I could see being a potential scumbag enough to use this as a a political jump, it would be Trump. And it's just because like you just assume that he's a scumbag human, and you're not you're not very far off base but at the end of the day like he's he's still a person he's still a human he's you know he i, I view it very much like a like a darth vader you know not to, to, okay. to go to go a little geeky like there's still some good in just about everyone no matter how bad the exterior is like you've got to believe that there's still and like I said on that, like, I don't even know if he's spoken yet, but I, or if he is speaking, I thought he might be speaking tonight, but I was like, man, if that little bit of good in him could come out tonight and him be thankful that he's alive. And like, I know he said, we need to uh, unite. I fear that that's just, you know, at the RNC, not everyone, but man, it, well, it I mean, would be, it would there, be so good. There, just there is see. a lot of division in the RNC about him being the candidate yeah There's a lot of division about picking jd vance right so then he's uh, and i think that yeah i hope we unite it was more of a statement for the rnc than it was for the country yeah. well and it worked i mean nikki haley's already you know bending the knee and you know they're they're all already like you know we're fall gonna get, line or get fall in line or get the fuck out that's it that's it and you know it's and that's that's what i've worried about on the other side like you know, the, the problem well, the problem with the other side, man, is just, and I don't, I don't mean like any personal, you're you not going to offend me personal offense to anybody or, and I mean, not you, like, I'm not, I'm not going to yeah. sit here, yeah. say that you lack intelligence. Um, but I will say like uh, cognitive ability, like Joe Biden is losing it. I agree. And, and, and I, it's, it's sad. And at this point to me, it's just like, this is elderly abuse. I agree. Get this, I agree. Poor, get this poor guy off I agree. the stage. I don't know who's calling the shots, but I'm guessing it's not him. Um, and Kamala Harris, she's just 
what has she done? It's not likable. She's not. There's no charisma. And there, she's not likable. And, and you know what? what and, she, doesn't, and another, she doesn't speak intelligently. She does not. And another and that, part that of the problem her. is when you say this, 90% of the people that are going to vote the same way I'm going to vote would have instantly jumped back at you and been like, but Trump's in cognitive decline too. But Trump, but Trump. I never said he wasn't Trump. either. No. And, and I right. don't like, to me, it's like, it doesn't even need to be said to me. It just needs to be acknowledged that there's a problem and you're acknowledging a problem about Joe Biden as a, as a conservative that I am able to acknowledge with you and say, it is damn near elder abuse. It is like, this is, this is not cool. It's and it's not cool watch. that he it's, won't it's step hard. down. It's hard to watch because it is hard to watch. And I work for the country and I look at the news and I'm like, that's like, I, I, I you know, work for him. I, I work for the country. Kind of. Well, he's, he's the commander in chief and I still work for a uh, department yeah. sort of daily. Right. So yeah. at the end of the day, uh, it, it at, is at one the end man. of the day. His, his picture's in my building. Correct. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and, and you know, what it boils down to is it's like, I just, I feel like we need better representation and the, the clown shows that both sides are putting forward is a terrible representation. It is of what our country actually is, can, and will be hopefully in the future. But it, it, it's tough when you sit here and say, like, we've been a powerhouse for so long. We got two bumbling idiots running for control of the country. Yeah. And it's just it's like, just we, yeah. When, when is our long-term future going to come into the picture? Because right now, you know, the, the only reason I'm still going to vote the way I vote, well, there's multiple reasons, but at this point you have to vote for the team that you align with, not the person. Like I, I have to like, l let's be honest. Neither of these guys are going to be on this earth for much longer. Right. So like, there's a good chance that neither one of them, not a good chance. There's a, there's a better chance than most that neither one of them are going to live out their term. Yeah. There's a, there's a possibility there for sure. Not saying it will or won't happen, but it's like, why, why can't we get some, I'm not saying that youth is strictly strength, but why can't we just go ahead and get stronger candidates and stronger leadership possibilities now? Why are we settling and okay with, you know, two guys that are either almost 80 or over 80? It's insane. I think they're just easier to control. I think you're right. Because they both are like, but you know, they both are. Right. And then, and then you have the, you know, the potential, like I've heard about the potential of Joe Biden coming off the ballot. And then who did the Democrats put up Kamala Harris? It's not inspiring. And, and the, I, I just think that regardless of whichever side wins, we, we got to have somebody that can at least, you know, represent the country well bring us and, together a little bit and then yeah i i think that there's something to be said like i use barack obama for instance one hell of a public speaker right excellent motivator he knows what to say he knows when to say it i don't really think that he was given a whole lot of any of his speech material i think it's things that he was able to cognitively come up with his own on his own and that's not anything that either of our presidents are doing. No. Like, well, in perception wise, you know, he was presidential. Right. Right. And perception and wise. And perception goes a long ways when you're a leader. Some leaders don't have skills except for public speaking. But there's that. There is that. But at the end of the day, like we're talking about like we're fucking Team America World Police. And if <laughs> If we got some bumbling guy who's fallen asleep or some guy who just talks about how great things are going to be and, you know, everything like, <laughs> what is that showing the rest of the world? Like, we're just struggling and holding on by a thread. Yeah. I mean, I, 
I would think we're a laugh, laughing weak. stock either way. Yeah, we look weak. We look yeah. extremely weak. Like it, it's it's no wonder that you know there's there's people that want to go after the West. Like what a great time to do it. We're weak. Like you know, at least leadership wise. Yeah. Every everything is it just comes off as we are very broken, and we are very broken. Extremely. Um. I like the whole drain the swamp rhetoric that you know Trump was touting. I think there's there's a time and place for that, and I think it's coming very soon. But I don't necessarily know that it's going to have to do with Democrats or Republicans. This is going to have to be policies and bureaucracies when you got you know new new laws and rules and everything being put into effect that are two thousand pages long. Nobody's reading all that shit. No, you're you're damn sure expected to follow the rules that are in it, right? Because it was approved. Yep. What what benefit does that have to anybody? Like I, I don't somebody's know. Somebody's just getting their agenda pushed and money put in their pockets. Yeah. So yeah, and, and like you said, a lot of that stuff's not getting read and not to just pick on certain people, but you know, we we've got a congresswoman with a GED and nothing more. You know, and, and I'm not trying to like slander the importance of having a GED, but how do how do we have people make you know, a lawmaker that dropped out of high school and has a GED. How, how, right. how the hell is that supposed to work? Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't, how, how, do you, but, how do you take that person seriously in that position? I, I don't know. Uh, and, I don't and that's know. the thing too. The fact that, I mean, I, I hate to like pigeonhole things, but you would think a, a government elected official would have to have some kind of education. Or credentials. You're assuming, you're assuming that they are legally elected. That as well. But right. so, you, know, you know what I mean? I, like there, there should be like, just like I can't go on indeed and apply to be a, a chemical engineer because I don't have any of the qualifications. Like you shouldn't be able to jump into a race to be a government official yeah. without any qualifications of being a government official. There's got to be some credential requirement for that. And it probably is like a GED or something, you know, just Pro- to, it probably is. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the credentialing for that was written in 1952 or something. And it's right. You know, 2% of the population maybe went to college. Yeah. And well, now we're, we're, we're in so deep, like a lot of this stuff needs updated, revised, rewritten. We need to yeah. admit, we need new amendments, but who's good. Like the fighting is, is so crazy like no one's gonna let the other one no no side's gonna let the other side do any of this yep nobody will budge no so there's no like what do you do i don't know man i don't know what the answer is uh i know what it's not and that's what we have been doing for the last hundred years and just watching everything just progressively get worse and worse and worse and then you go down the whole another you know, technology rabbit hole that follows along with it. Where have you seen the predictions that we're going to have an AI president in like 10 years? I've not seen that, but that's not surprising either. Yeah. That's was, not I, scary I was, at all. I was reading some articles about that. I was like, Ooh, I, I, AI, I mean, a whole I, another topic, man. Wow. I, can I really know some rabbit but, hole about AI. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm heavily, heavily, heavily worried. Like, I know it seems silly to be like, maybe we should listen to the movies, but maybe we should listen to the movies. They're warning us. Dude, it's, there's there's outcomes. Yeah. There's outcomes to everything. Like there's, there's variables to everything. Like if you get, God gave us free will, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. and look what we've done with it. Right. Well, we, we've, uh, a human, I mean, some good humans but are some inherently bad. evil. We have to be taught to be good. We have to willfully be good. Like that is a very much a conscious decision to do. It, people as, as human beings are inherently dangerous. Right. We're really good at making bad decisions. Yeah. Really good. Uh, so, so when it comes to things like that, it's like, you know, people always want to go for, go, 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 get more, you know, do better, make bigger things. Nobody ever asks, like, uh, should we? Yeah. Like, what's the stopping point? And I think we've already crossed that line. Oh, yeah, we've already crossed it. And, and again, 
I'll let you get off here soon because I think it's getting late for both of us. But yeah, you know what? All in the name of money, really. Like we're like we're 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 going to go down the AI path and rabbit hole just to line pockets. I mean, I, and I know there's more to it. I know there's a convenience factor. And I know that some people just think, oh, life's going to be so convenient with this help. But also. I think it was, I think it was really driven. And this is just a personal thought, right? Um, you know, like Idiocracy, the movie is a documentary, right? So far, yeah. Well, <laughs> AI can stop all that from happening. It just has to be told properly and it has to be contained and it has to be regulated. Do you know who is the uh, chairperson for the regulation committee for artificial intelligence? Do I want to know? Oh, probably not. Kamala Harris. That's strange. Why? That makes no what sense. What credentials does she have? I guess the same credentials as most of our sitting Congress people. Hey, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. You want to control? You want to control AI? Get yourself a GED. Yeah. <laughs> Step right up. Slap a robot. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah, that. Uh, that's that, nice. That, that's that's an interesting thing, right? So, and, and I'm not saying she's and, not, uh, me, she's a me, not intelligent woman. Like I think she is a. An intelligence has many facets. There's emotional intelligence, social intelligence, book smart, yeah. street smarts. There's so many different kinds of intelligence, but like. Never in a million years would I have pegged her to have AI intelligence. And I'm sure yeah, she doesn't. I was, what I, man, I read that. I was like, what? Uh, okay. I, uh, I don't know, you know, who, who's, who's, I guess her pockets are getting lined with something, but that's, that's, that's a, that's a wild, that's a whole wild endeavor on its own. Yeah. And it, it scares the ever living shit out of me. Me as well. And, and I hate to be a little selfish thinking on it, but I'm glad I've at least made it to my forties without having to see it come to fruition. Like I'll probably see it come to fruition, but you know, yeah, man, this is wild times we're living in. Like, oh, our, yeah. well, you our and lifetime I, is insane. You and you and our, you and I, our lifetime is absolutely nuts. It went from Atari to AI. Yeah. In, in like no time we've seen, we've We're, seen all this shit, cell phones, internet, AOL, you know, high speed social mm -hmm. media, you know, we, we got to live before it and seeing how just going out in the world and, and interacting with new people was, uh, we, we have literally, mm -hmm. it is, it is a very, and I know that there's people before us as well. You know, my, my, I still have two grandparents that are alive, the shit that they've seen, you know? From yeah, going, from going I, to the fifties up until now, like I, it, it's mm -hmm. got to blow blow their minds. Blows mine. I'm cu I'm just I'm curious as to how 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 the fuck did we learn this stuff? I, I don't know. That blows the, my I, mind. I don't know. That blows my mind. The, well, I mean, that's the fact that with, that's up there with space never ends. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. You know. That, <laughs> that that's a whole other thing completely. Like how. At what point do we gain more knowledge on that? It's going to happen. I mean, sure, right? But the, technology is crazy, and it keeps getting crazier. I don't know if we'll see. I doubt we live to know what is you know far out there in the universe. But have you ever watched any of those shows like Ancient Apocalypse and things yeah, like that? yeah, I've seen no. stuff like it before. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more stuff that's coming out like that now, and um, there's a lot of stuff that really contradicts a lot of science that i guess kind of spiritual paradigm right in the last year or so um i sort of listened to the show called blurry creatures have you ever heard of it i have okay those guys man they uh they turned me like i'm, I'm pretty much like a i was a, kind of a, a non-believer in anything into I'm, I'm i'm pretty heavy into into the god the god stuff now man like i'm i'm in my bible a lot and doing a lot of that sort of thing that sort of thing lately and a lot of it's because of like the, you know, just supernatural type things that I've kind of been questionable on what's happened and the history of earth. And why are we even here? Like, what, what is this? Like, what the fuck yeah. is this? Yeah. I'm in a room with stuff on my wall. Why? Yeah. 
that that's like that's the stuff that's going on in my head these days oh, i'm, I'm like, with you what even is this i mean i'll randomly just you know is it is this a simulation you know I, i'll randomly have that thought is this is i know and i uh i'm kind of the, we're just in I'm the truman the show yeah i'm yeah. on the opposite path of you kind of like i grew up in church um i have faith i'll never lose my faith but my faith is is very singular my faith is in that higher being that i believe you know uh, god my my faith is is god but i i i have i have zero faith in the bible now absolutely zero okay um i'd be interested to have a whole long conversation with you about that we can do that next time i'll just shut up and keep it at that okay i like it yeah that's that's, a, that's a and, and that's and there's a guilt that comes with that because i feel like i'm going against Ooh. what everyone says is is correct and right and at the same time i'm like this no longer makes sense to me yeah but where do you as a human draw your moral code kindness it's it's it starts and ends with kindness i do it it does not have anything to do i do not fear god i have no I'm not a God fearing man. Huh. I, I'm a God accepting man. I'm a God appreciating man. I appreciate when I have a close call on the highway, I look straight up and I say, thank you. That that close call wasn't more, but I'm not about, I'm not about. I don't, think, I don't put, think God fearing means that you should feel like you are in fear of God. No, no, I get that. But a lot of people right. do take it that way. A lot of people right, do. Right, a lot right, of people right. are living a moral code based on fear of the repercussions and fear of what they've been taught and what they've read right, in the which book. Is a, which is a, 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 you know, repercussions are a moral standard put forth by our creator. Maybe. And that's in the Bible. And you're talking to somebody that doesn't believe in the Bible? Well, that's interesting. Yeah. It, it, it's slippery slope. Yeah. I, I mean, I have so little faith in man that a book uh -huh. written by multiple men makes no sense to me anymore. And the mm -hmm. translation over time, especially time that deep. I mean, the, the, the yearning for power and control which in my opinion, religion is the highest source of power and control. It, it started somewhere in, a, in I, an organized fashion. I, I you know, I, I don't disagree with you. Right. Um, especially like, uh, I'm not, and I'm not I'm, saying I'm every not book on anybody, Bible. but the Catholic Catholic church is like the number one. Oh yeah. Hot mess. You know, like business in the whole world. Correct. Correct. Uh, and I'm not saying that I don't believe I would give credit to some stories okay i i don't disbelieve everything that's in there but i think it is naive to believe everything that is i think it's naive to believe well, every every chapter written by someone different i i, I just i find yeah, but a it lot of them say the same thing and they probably man this is a whole long conversation um right and, and I, I can do, I'll be, be, to be completely honest with you, I can sit here and say, like, I'm not quite learned enough to have like a, an educated back and forth sort of firing about it. I just know, you know, what, what I've been learning and what I'm perceiving of the, the word of Christ and, you know, the books in the Bible and things it's. It, it man it's been it's been so heavy and overwhelming lately and um my life has like radically changed because of it yeah for the better and i just see there's so much better happening around me and i don't think and i and i would never accuse anyone of being wrong for for that happening or the same the same as everything else we've talked about i could fully admit if i was wrong about not believing in every book of the bible wouldn't wouldn't be a problem you know what i mean but i yeah. the way i see it is I, I i don't i don't see disbelief in a book as being anywhere near a reason for eternal damnation or even purgatory for me it, it just boils down to like were you good 
and I'll even go as far as to say, like, you know, do you accept, you know, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. Like, I do. I do believe in that time period. Okay. I think, I think a lot of things have been embellished post that time period. And I think a lot of things have been used for self-serving purposes post that time period. And I think things have possibly been lost in translation. But at the end of the day, if I feel like I am doing as much good in this world as I can, having as much empathy for living things as I can, acknowledging my creator, acknowledging, you know, a power much higher than myself. I definitely do not believe that I ever have to step foot in a church or that I ever have to, I do believe in repenting, you know, okay. so, so I do, but yeah. I do not believe this strict rule book of, I, cause so much of it. And I've been to so many different denominations and they are all for the most part, fire and brimstone. They are for the most part judging you before you can even be judged. Right. And, and they that's, are, that's a tough thing about trying to get into a church, right? Yeah. I don't bother anymore. So, and that was, well, and that was, that was, that's kind of been a big thing for us. And like, I don't feel necessarily judged at the church we're trying, you know, that we started going to. Yeah. And I don't mean it in that, like but, a, but, uh, like an anti way, no, like, oh, no, I totally know what you're talking about. Me. Right. Yeah, Cause yeah, like, yeah. you know, going to church as a kid, it's like, oh, you see people show up like, oh, those are the CEs. I'm like, what's a CE? Oh, Christmas and Easter's. You know, that's, that's when the people come to church, you yeah. know, it's Christmas and Easter. And that's the only time you ever see them in church. Um, I, I like going to church. I really enjoy the Bible study portion of it. Um, a lot of times though, I, like I'll be, you know, completely honest. It's like, well, you know, Sundays, if I can get an extra hour of sleep, that's probably my day that I'm going to take it. And I, I, I feel guilty about that. Like I could, I could get my butt up and I could get to church or I could stay in my bed for an extra hour. And, and a lot of times the bed wins and yeah. I don't know. I've got so a buddy very... that church changed his life. He was on drugs and he was a hot mess and church gave him structure and it gave him guidance and it gave him purpose and it gave him reason. And it's the best thing that's ever happened to him. And I'll say it day in and day out, stay there because it's working for you. Well, sure. And that, that's a lot of the initial structure. Have you ever been to, well, well, I guess it wouldn't be anonymous. Never mind. Um, I've attended AA and NA meetings. Uh, the AA stuff was due to me getting a DUI years and years and years ago. Um, the NA meeting was because after that DUI, and I kind of went through a process of stuff with the Navy where I became a drug and alcohol program advocate, like for, people that are having issues. So I had to go to NA meetings. Well, the guys in there and stuff like the whole premise of those meetings and the structural foundation is one in, in, in the Bible and in, in God and having that, that, that powerful moral code, which essentially just, I guess if, if effectively guilts people into staying in line. Yeah. And I, some people need that. Some people yeah. need the structure. Some people need the guide. Some people need the rule book. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just feel differently about myself. Okay. Like I, I'm very confident in how kind I am. I'm very confident in, in the way I live my life and the way I treat others. And, you know, and this is not how I live, but in my opinion, like, to, and I, and I really don't like subscribe to this, but why not believe, you know what I mean? Like wh what, what's, what's the, what's the downside to believing there's a huge downside to not believing if you're wrong, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and he, uh, even that that's, you know, so, that's and I don't believe just because of that. Well, that's I've where had moments. faith comes in, right? That's yes. where faith comes in. Yes. And I've had moments of clarity where I'm like, I am certain that there is an afterlife and I am certain that it is similar mm. to, you know, at least some, I love NDE videos like near death experience videos. Love that yeah. shit. Like I get so into that, 
you know, okay, I'll, I'll chase that. I'll chase that YouTube rabbit hole. Oh, time. dude, it's so good because so many yeah. it, it gives you it bumps your faith up a little bit because you have so many people that have passed away for five to ten minutes, and and so many of their recollections are so similar, and they're also uplifting, and they're also positive, and it's like this this helps. This yeah. helps me to believe that like this isn't it, but a lot of those same pe people also, you know don't have anything to do with traditional religion in the sense, you know, they're, they were just good. They were just good people. Yeah. And I, and I, and I just feel like I see too many people in organized religion because they think it's a free ticket. They think it's a free pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, can, yeah. they can leave the church and go be as shitty as they want to be, but I got to go repent and it doesn't matter. Correct. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that's the reason I don't go. I'm just saying like I you know I I think there's it's, it's in your best interest to avoid that type of person. Yeah, and I think there's going to be exceptions. To me there's exceptions both ways. Like I don't think you know, I think the person that doesn't call him God or practice Christianity, maybe it's Buddha, maybe it's, you know, whatever. Like but if their version is about kindness and it's, that's what they were taught. Cause think about it. Not, not everybody's taught about Jesus Christ. Not everybody's taught about God. So right. like, are those people automatically, you know, damned because they were never taught, but they're yeah. good. They're good. They're good people who understand that it's bigger than them. Right. You know, it, it, there's just a lot of thought to wrap around it. And, and at the end of the day, it's like most of the worst people I know, are quotation Christians. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I, I consider that's... myself one, but it's a different, it's a different form. It's an unpracticed religion, strictly faith. Christianity, in my opinion, is what that's, I kind of go by. That's and I, I, you know, that, that's, that's a very sound perspective on that. Um, and I, I don't disagree with you at all. I'm not going to sit here and beat you up about it and be like, Oh, you should be going to church and yada, yada. Well, I, like, I don't disagree with anybody I going who, to church. You know, yeah. like, I, I just, I don't uh, disagree um, with anybody who wants to take their family to church. And like, you know, especially if it's rooted in kindness and not fire and brimstone, you know what I mean? Like I, I just don't, I don't think right. it's as simple as there is only one right way and all the wrong ways. So real quick, I'll just kind of explain to you how I wound up where I am. Um, and that's going from being like a total non-believer to like, holy crap, I was way off. And a lot of it has to do with the story of uh, creation, good and evil, and a lot of paranormal type things that I just, oh, and a... um a lack of teaching in those things. I think that there, when oh, me growing up in the church was, there's a lot of, Oh, we should be, you know, you should love God. You should love Jesus, but you never really understood why you yeah. should. Yeah. You, know, by default. You, weren't, you weren't really taught why. And yeah. the whole like yeah. creation thing, right. And most churches now they steer away from the old Testament too. So you're not being taught any of the, to be real here, any of the cool stuff or the weird shit. Right. And the weird stuff is what was the foundation of what we are now and moral code and all those things. Right. And that's all the old, the old Testament stuff. And there's all the prophetical things and all the other stuff that happens later on and, and no stories. And it, it's just, it's like, there's just so much in there. And to me, and this is kind of counter to how you put it is there's just so much in there that that happens for it to not be true it's too grand of a story to be something that is made up i i agree with that because i don't think it's all made up and i actually align i think the old testament is probably the more honest part of that book and i think as time goes on things get added i think well, i think it's straight there, from there, things got taken out too though right yes so there's like there's whole books that were not you know, approved to be in the Bible, like the book of Enoch, right? When that talks, you know, about things like the Nephilim and the watchers and, you know, just the kind of the history of how man wound up, how we wound up. And, the, you know, 
the the reason that everyone thinks you know this that this god is crazy that he would flood the earth and kill everybody well you, you didn't read the whole bible to understand why he had to do that and it, it's he's not some maniacal lunatic it was things didn't go right because we have free will well, we had free will and then you had you know uh some angels came down from heaven and accordance with the scripture they they saw that the the you know the wives of man were beautiful and they took them for their own and created like hybrid babies and stuff like that things that were not supposed to happen so he's like this is all messed up and like chimerical creatures and all the other stuff all the stuff that is myth and folklore and this that and the other it's all rooted in something oh yeah and it you know and then uh, we were talking i talked about the whole ancient apocalypse thing and everything they're finding stuff that's so damn old they're like they have no clue how any of this shit got to where it is yeah there's no not even a time code on it you know there's yeah yeah and And, and, and that's what it boils down to there's so much we don't know so you just have to have faith in what you have the the problem is you have archaeologists and scientists that want to paint a specific narrative and a group of 10 of them get in a room and they're the ones that get the most funding. So they get to call the shots. Right. And that's what, you know, that's what humanity is taught. And it's most of it is very far from what actually happened or the truth. Cause we just don't know. Yeah. And a lot of those stories are lost over time. And I also think that the Bible, a lot of it was written with a certain inherent knowledge of the time that people already had the background of what was going on. And that's something that that's a piece that we are missing because we were not alive during those, those times. Right. To catch those backstories from ancestors and stuff, but that can be a whole nother conversation. We can figure things out later. I could sit here and talk all night about this sort of thing, but I do need to get some sleep as do I. <laughs> so, so that, right, that, man. that, that just saves us something for another time. So absolutely. Yeah. So this was a ton of fun. I'm not sure if this is what you were expecting or hoping for or whatever. I don't know. I go into it with no expectations. You know what though, man, I had a really good time hanging out with you. Same. Absolutely. hundred percent the same. Like conversations kind of lost. So when you can have it and it's, uh, you know, two ways. Yeah. Beneficial, at least in, in some ways, you know, Mm -hmm. most ways in this case. Yeah. And you know, we've, different political leanings and somehow managed to have a however long is it now hour and some change i'm sure yeah how about that yeah people can still talk who do who thunk yell at each other. weird uh, screw you rob no no it was good i appreciate it and we'll um, you know we'll do it again because we can absolutely man i it appreciate it it doesn't matter when or for how long we'll just Anytime we're feeling like it, we'll make it happen. All right. Do um, you mind if I drop a plug? No, not at all. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. Um, so I'm half of getting older with Rob and Joe being the Rob part. Uh, Joe is at his house, probably hanging out in the man cave where we record. Um, he likes to play video games up there. But anyway, check out our show. Hashtag older pod. If you don't feel like looking for it anywhere, you can just literally Google search hashtag older pod. We're on every podcast platform that you could possibly want to listen to us on. Um, but we're just two guys that drink some whiskey and bullshit about comical things and world happenings and stuff as well. But I try to keep it a little bit lighter on that show than this one. Yeah. Which, which so. is good because we need that too. Not yeah. everything could be, I couldn't do this every night. You know what I mean? Like it's, I mean, this it, is heavy. Good. Yeah. 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 It's good. But like, this is, you know, this, this is where people do kind of they go too deep. You know, sometimes you just go too deep and sometimes you feel like it. And sometimes you don't, sometimes I, I want to go inside and turn on the most mindless comedy or sitcom or baking show. Have you watched and exploding kittens? I've got, my kids have a game called exploding kittens, but I don't know if I've seen a show. It's, it's on Netflix. You a million percent should check it out. Uh, I will, especially if it can't get shot. God gets shot that. back down to earth as a cat to help a family. It sounds interesting enough to watch. <laughs> it's a mess. 
<laughs> I, like a, I like a good mess. You'll love it. You'll love it. It is good. Sounds good. So, all right, Bart. Well, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate your time. Thanks Pre- for hanging out. Appreciate you too, man. Completely. All right, all right. Bye. See ya. Again, if this is the kind of conversation you want to have, hit me up. Uh, bark at obscuremikes.com. If you want to talk about anything else and just think that we can have a conversation that is valuable to, uh, to listeners, let me know. I am very game to have meaningful conversations about meaningful or non-meaningful things. So if that's something you want to do, let's do it. I'll see you guys next time.